let's bring in Jeff Gold on, on this. And, and Jeff, you and I have talked about it. The Juan Martinez has one gear. I think it's fifth or sixth gear, and he's 100 miles an hour all the time. They're a little more reflective, right? Just kind of different to hear him like that, especially after today, the way he's gone after Alice LaViolette. Well, of course, I'm sure if you if you chatted with Joe Frazier in a Philadelphia bar, uh, he'd be uh, lovable. And when he was in the ring, he was tough as nails. So that's his persona in the ring. He's tough as nails, but as a human being, he's got a softer side. Nothing unusual about that. Yeah, a little, little reflective there. Well, let's hit on what we've heard today and just your assessment because... And you nailed it. You, you, he hit a crescendo laying out his case that Jody Arias is the stalker here. She's the one that really fits on this continuum of abuse. Well, let me summarize the entire cross-examination in three points. Remember the Snow White? Okay. Uh, you know, kind of we've said garbage in, garbage out. Well, fantasy in fantasy out. So he said, look, if you base something on a fantasy and everything Jody is saying is a lie, then your opinion is worthless, number one. Number two, he got Alice to admit the other day that, uh, sh that what Jody said after the killing, it wasn't hard to get her to admit this, was lies. She lied after the killing. Well, guess what? She talked to Alice LaViolette after the killing. So maybe that was a lie. Second big point. And today, the substantive point about Jody Arias fitting the mold of a domestic violence aggressor, a terrorist, the highest level of aggressor. You put those three things together, he's done a very good job. I still think this dense has checked their mark of domestic violence so they can get it to the jury. They need to do that. But Juan has been tremendously effective today on the substance, getting the jury to hear that Jody was a stalker, that Jody was inside the house watching him have sex with another woman. That's tremendous. Yeah, and it was easy to, I mean, if you're a jury, you don't need any kind of degree to, to follow along the common sense point. Yes. Travis is afraid of her stalking behavior. Uh, stalking is on your continuum of aggression and abuse, uh, Miss LaViolette. You go on. Jody moves to Mesa, Arizona after the relationship's over. She goes to the house uninvited. She's peering in as he's kissing uh, another woman. And basically, he's done with the relationship, but Jody's not. And it fits well for Juan Martinez, and it has today. There's just one more thing, Mike. You know, yeah. people will be asking the question, if this was true and he was somehow the victim of domestic violence, then why would he have sex with her that night? And that's because all these domestic violence are, uh, issues are cycles. They're codependency between two people. So it's always the case that the, that the victim goes back. It's not surprising at all that he would be, on the one hand, terrorized of the stalking, and on the other hand, still have sex with her. It's what domestic violence is all about. It's a credible job by the mm. state to turn around this issue. Great point, Jeff. All right, we're going to take a quick break and have more. Uh, Jeff Gold, great defense attorney. All right, Jeff, clarify for everybody here. As Juan Martinez, we knew he would. He went right at her, talking about how many times have you testified on behalf of a man? She said twice, and now we're basically finding out, wait a minute, you didn't testify. You wrote a report, and Juan Martinez saying you're misrepresenting yourself to the jury. How big's that? It's huge, Mike. I was listening to it when I heard her. And remember, this was a juror question that was asked by the judge to begin with. And when you answer direct questions from a juror, you better be honest. These are the people that are going to decide your client's fate. And she fudged it. She looked up in the air. She thought about it like the great Karnak and came out with one or two. I don't testify much, uh, one or two. And now what we find out is it was probably zero, that she probably never testified for a man in a uh, criminal case. So that's huge because you don't lie to the jury. Yeah, well put. And we like the Karnak reference as well. Well done. All right, <laughs> we're going to have uh, much more coming up. The fireworks are going to continue.